Hi, Shalom, brothers and sisters. A little belated, some might say. Um, and we did a Mother's Day message, but we didn't do a Father's Day message. And although these so-called holidays, you know, these Gentile holidays are not our holidays, still the Holy Spirit says to um, redeem the time because the day is evil. These days are evil. In other words, how do we redeem the time? You know, usually when say a Father's Day come along or a Mother's Day or another Gentile folly day, we just kind of either we try to turn off from it or we try not to pay attention or we get caught into it and we say, well, you know, I really don't deal with this. And we kind of, it kind of shuts us down on a certain level. But this, this verse came to us and this verse was reminded to us. It's first right here in Isaiah 43, verse 27. And um, I've been meditating on it, and it's been kind of coming to my mind. I don't know if you've come across this, Isaiah chapter 43, verse um, 27. Let's see, 43 and 27. Let's see if we can bring that up, Bamarinya, in the, in the Amharic. Um, Tinbete, Isaias. Let's go to Isaias, um 43. And 27. So we're going to try to bring that up right here. And so we'll have it in the Amharic and the English. But this is a this is a somewhat belated on uh, level Father's Day message. Now, as far as the Western Father's Day, let's just get to the the the, the foundation of this. Father's Day wasn't even a so-called holiday or anything until Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon to Richard Nixon actually, um, how can you say, he put it into law. It was in the Nixon administration. That's interesting, considering our father, Abba Kedus Kedus Abba Tachin, which is pictured before you, his Imperial Majesty, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, that he was the last, Nixon was the last um, American um, president whom His Majesty consulted with. And this is kind of interesting. This is kind of on the side view, but some of you all probably can either follow up for, on that a little bit more, maybe it might help some of you all in some of the research and the studies that you might be upon, is that every president that he spoke to, we go, we go forward to um, Eisenhower. He won Eisenhower of the military-industrial complex. You know, as Eisenhower finally said something that was suppressed for years, and after 9-11, everybody found the footage, and now it's out there with Eisenhower, his warning. But we know that His Majesty was was the one who who opened um, Eisenhower's understanding to what really was going on because of what Eisenhower said in newspaper report from the 1950s, so forth and so on, concerning um, concerning the fact that Haile Selassie, who didn't have this sort of um, education that, you know, this, this Western education that many, many of them like um, Eisenhower had, that he would know these things, that His Majesty knew these things, and Eisenhower himself didn't. And we've touched on that before in, in other related um, videos, right? So anyway... Um, Nixon. We have some pictures of Nixon, but this machine is operating a little bit on the blink, and we didn't restart it since the last videos, but we said we wanted to get into a belated um, Father's Day um, message, and, and to make this a particular message um, to I and I and to the black man and to our brothers, and our brothers in particular, the sisters, of course, there's, you know, we don't run no wire fence or nothing like that. The sisters... Of course, this is probably checking out. It's the brothers, really, that we're trying to reach out to. Because when we see what is written, let's close up some of these right here. When we see what is written here in Isaiah, or Isaiah, Isaiah's chapter, Yeshayahu, in the Hebrew, chapter um, chapter 40 here. You see this thing's on the blink right now. So here's what we're going to do with this right here. We'll close this up. We might have to restart this program right here. But when we go to Isaiah, 
Yeah, it's on the blank right here. Let's see if we can go back to all the backup programs. So we're still with this in the English right now. The verse is 27, and the chapter is 43, and the book is Isaiah. It says, Thy first father hath sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. All right, and we make this as a message to the Ethiopians at home and abroad. Um, that this is a message to us. Because when we think of Father's Day, even in its modern Gentile sense, since it's a 1974, 75, I think that's, it's interesting that when Father's Day came into effect, you understand at what time in history it was. And also what happened to almost every president, Kennedy got shot because Kennedy began to wake up and he was speaking out about you know, the New World Order and the, and, the, and the secret societies and all these things. Um, Fifty days after, he met with this man, our father, at Amari Hala Selassie. Now, that, that, that can't just be coincidence. You know, and then Nixon is the first president, I think, to be impeached, especially in the 20th century, the first president to be impeached. Uh, I think maybe only the second or so, you know, to be impeached. But um, that also is very interesting as well, and if you look at some of the pictures of Nixon and his imperial majesty, they're very, very interesting. You could tell that Nixon was the one who was who was learning so much from our father, uh, whether that weighed in to his Father's Day kind of thing, but it's interesting. So the Father's Day is not so much important, so much the Father's Day in the Western sense, since it's a Johnny-come-lately holiday, and we have to ask questions why was the Mother's Day so long, you know, having it as a holiday? And then Father's Day doesn't come about until the 1970s and after what they did to our father. But in getting back to the scriptures, what we want to um, answer from the scriptures is what does it, you know, who is that father is it talking about? Now, hopefully we can open this right here. Who is that who is that father that's being talked about when, when, when the scripture says that your first father has sinned? We have to go back to the beginning, and we have to go back to Adam. The whole story in the Bible of Adam and Eve, and we're trying to bring up this picture right here. And we um, might have to restart this if we want to use, use these uh, presentations. Okay, the machine want to be on the blink right now. So we just return to this picture of our father. That's thing about Adam and Eve, the whole Adam and Eve thing, which is a very, very interesting story. We might not be able to present, do a full presentation right here, so this will be like the introduction to our Father's Day message until we can um, restart and, and the machine won't be operating so much on the blink. But we want to suggest to ones um, the Gedla Adam, the Gedla Adam is very, very interesting, especially brothers. I want you to check this out because we look at the whole biblical story. This first father is Adam. Now, the section in the Bible where we find this chapter 43 is speaking of the chosen nation. We Ethiopians at home and abroad. Redeemed and restored. It's speaking of our, our redemption and our restoration. The two the two um, families of the Lord, the Ethiopians at home and abroad. And it's interesting when we go to the beginning of the chapter, it says, But now thus saith the Lord, or Yahweh, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. So you restore it to us, I and I name. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now, if you've been following these sabbatical studies, remember the Torah, the Orit, the Torah is given in the circumstance with these three elements. Um, fire, water, and wilderness. If you study the Bible, you'll find these concepts of water and fire, fire and water, and also there's that wilderness experience that we experience on the individual and personal level 
when we are born again and when we um, begin to um, follow Christ. It's like we're in the wilderness. A lot of our friends and family and people think we're crazy and, and all the kind of things, all because we just want to um, know our true Father. You understand? We want to know our true God. We want to learn his word. We want to fellowship with others who have that same call or desire, or rather, who have that same spirit of his son, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. Right? Ones begin to think that, okay, we're crazy. You understand? Something is, something is absolutely wrong with us. Right? So there's that wilderness experience. That's one example of the wilderness. Mm-hmm. And we as the lost sheep are in the wilderness of North America. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he reminded us of that. And that's why we had touched on that in some of the videos concerning the wilderness, the review of this Torah portion, the Book of Numbers, which is very, very, is very important in our studies. That's why we're trying to go through some of the elementals because in the... In the Shabbat postings, we didn't really get to get into the fullness of it. So it's here that we want to review in the week, go through it, and also make the connection with where we're going and how we're coming out of Babylon. So we have to recognize our divine heritage as Ethiopians at home, that's in the continent, and abroad. You see, so the Ethiopian connection, the prophetic connection, the biblical connection to it. Let's um see if we can do this right here. Okay, we cancel this. Let's see if we can. You can see this thing is all out of order right here. So let's try to close this up right here. We, we try to close that up and maybe we'll try to restart the IOTA, the IOTA programming, right? So Father's Day, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, whom you call Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior. Everything in his ministry, everything in his testimony was concerning the Father. Quite interestingly, prophetically, some might say ironically, when we study the testimony of his majesty is concerning the Son, Jesus Christos. Everything that we learn of his majesty faithfully speaking and concerning the faith, is concerning the testimony of his son. And this is one reason why this ministry of his majesty finds it to be um, essential and primary to our true walk as Rastafari, that we recognize the true teaching of his majesty and recognize what the whole I and I is really all about. It's that individual I, you understand? We could almost say our personal relationship with the Son of God, with the Son of the King of Kings. His Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, is very, very important. This is why there's so much mixed up moods and attitudes and one's all claiming to be Rasta and claiming to love his match in Ethiopia, but can't fellowship together, can't cooperate together, can't build on this divine heritage, right, and foundation that we have, and we call this the Ethiopian World Federation. You understand? Established August 25th, 1937. You remember when they talk about the kingdom, the kingdom being restored? Right, right here. We, the black peoples of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination, secure justice, and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, you get that right there, which is our divine heritage do hereby establish and ordain this constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation, incorporated. So we, the black peoples, you see right there? Now notice something as we go forward into, the, into Article 1, right, name, aims, and objects. See, the name is so important. It's our personal name, our real standing, being in our proper person to promote, right, love and goodwill among Ethiopians at home and abroad and thereby maintain the integrity and sovereignty. You see that sovereignty? The sovereignty of Ethiopia. Now, this is written in the context of our divine heritage. Let us recognize that. 
and let us recognize this brother, Dr. Malako Emmanuel Bay. And as we said before, it's his picture that you should have up. If anyone's picture along with his majesty's picture is the one whom he sent, Dr. Malako, his angel, Emmanuel Bayan. You know what I'm saying? If you overstood the language of, of, of the realm, you understand how important even his name is, much less his work, the work that he did on I and I behalf. You know what I'm saying? So notice how here we become Ethiopians, right? Ethiopians at home, that means native born and abroad here in the diaspora, right? The sovereignty of Ethiopia to disseminate the ancient Ethiopian culture among its members. You see, then it speaks about correcting abuses. Then it goes on to speak to us about relieving oppression and carve for ourselves and our posterity a destiny comparable with our idea of perfect manhood and God's purpose. You see that? God's purpose. So this is not a secular thing. It's not a religious organization, but it's a faith-based organization, if you understand what federation even means. You understand of those of this divine heritage. Understand that? Our idea of perfect manhood and God's purpose in creating us that we may not only save ourselves from annihilation, you understand, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, come out of her, my people, but carve for ourselves a place in the sun, that we may come out of this spiritual Egypt, the Perth Im Haru, Exodus, movement of Jah's people. In this endeavor, we determine to seek peace and pursue it, the Psalms. That is the Psalms. You know which Psalm it is? Look it up. To seek peace and pursue it, for it is the will, the will of God for man. Now, notice down here, section C, where it says, to usher in the teaching and practice of the what? The fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. The fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Overstand that, right? You see that? That's the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. See, this is the basic foundation. Before we get into bylaws, before we get into so-called election, who want to be the president, international president, who want to run stuff, you know, or who's issuing charters. Or what, no, 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 no. First things first, our divine heritage. That's the first question. Do you know what our divine heritage is? You know what I'm saying? If not, somebody got to sow that seed, that word to you. You see, and this is why the Federation in the time of the historical times that we speak about the Federation from 1937, roughly up to 67, then we go through a 40-year period up to the new millennium, 2007. And, and, and looking at that, even that time frame, it's, it's so very interesting, it's so very prophetic, but it's pathetic that we don't understand exactly that. So our first father... You know what I'm saying? Is that, is that Adam. You know what I'm saying? Is that Adam. You know what I'm saying? And, and you really need to understand about the Adam's family, our Adam's family. You see, and we was mentioning this before, that when some look at, um, when some, let's open this right here, see if we can open this. Here we go, the Gedla Adam, this particular document, and it's now available in print. You understand? Um, and the pictures from one of the cathedrals, the Ethiopian Adam and Eve. And then you could see, I think, like a lion, perhaps right there, perhaps symbolic of the lion of Judah, but it's in the blue, the blue being a symbol for the heavenly, black, you understand, being the reflection on earth, you understand, of the nature of heaven, black, of the red earth, so forth and so on, and therefore Adam. And this book right here is from our Ethiopic. Um, 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 archives. When I say our, our heritage, this is this is our culture. This this also teaches of our divine heritage. And then you begin to be basically understand the, our Adam, not the whitewashed Adam, the European Adam, so forth and so on, which sounds like our story, but actually it's another version of our story. It's it's in the Gedla Adam that we really find the missing elements. 
you know what I'm saying, the missing pieces, the, the half of the story that did not tell us. So therefore, when we read and study that, and then we look at this verse right here, thy first father have sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. You know what I'm saying, our first father. So brothers, I want you to get this message. You're speaking to us. You see, even the Constitution of the Federation speaks about perfect manhood, right? It speaks about ushering in what? Ushering in the pra and, and, and teaching and practice the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. But our first father, you understand, when, when we look at our ancestors, something went wrong in the system of things. And we can't just say it's just the white man, white man, white man. Yeah, he took advantage of a bad situation uh, on, on our behalf for his benefit. But something went on. Our first father has sinned. Now, when we go to Genesis, just reading the, the, the Bible that we have, right, and we look in the book of Genesis, and we see this particular, the, the, the pre-incarnate Christ, or the Lord, the Son, the Word, speaking to Adam and Eve. You understand? On behalf of the Father, remember the Father sent forward the Son, even in his pre-incarnate state. That's why they call them Adonai, even from such a time. So our first father of the race would be the Ethiopian Adam. You know, send an Adam being Atum, and Atum in ancient Egypt being a certain type. You know, send a certain symbolic character that was to teach and preserve a very important part of our, of our heritage. So we as black men, have fallen short because our first father, you know what I'm saying, our first father before our true father has been revealed to us, you know what I'm saying, and our true father being the king of kings, you know what I'm saying, and, and it's so interesting, this whole concept and idea of the first father, our first, when we talk about father's day, you understand, we have our earthly father, but we have our heavenly father, our father who art in heaven, so when we think of father's day, so it's not one of our holy days or holidays. You know what I'm saying? The first thing I thought of is this whole idea. I said, well, instead of shying away from it, we should utilize these, these times, redeem the time, and teach the real good and important lesson of this. And, and I say this to the brothers because um, a lot of our lack of brotherliness and cooperation and working together as many of the nationalities and races and people is a part, all part of that, that, that old self, the old man, that nigger, that Negro, black and colored nature, that artificial nature because we have not been born again. See, when we're born again, we look at the Garden of Eden story. We see the Garden of Eden story in a whole new light. When you really start to look at the Garden of Eden story, everyone blames the woman, right? Isn't that often usual to blame the woman? Because if Eve didn't give Adam the apple. And many men and a lot of you all might think so. Yeah, it was woman. Woman is the one that deceived the man. Sometimes you hear the brothers, them, you know, speaking uh, even among ourselves. And sometimes some man say certain things and he try to act like, well, 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 that's the Bible. You understand? And that is not, you, you understand? That has nothing whatsoever to do with the scriptures. That doesn't have anything to do with the real message that is taught to us or that is revealed to us in sacred or in holy scriptures. You remember this cover right here? Just to bring up this popular cover if we can. Let's see if we can bring up this cover right here. You might remember this Adam and Eve cover, right? Remember this? The search Remember there was that search for Adam and Eve, you know, once again affirming because it went straight to Africa and Ethiopia and that part of the world to show us basically what the Bible already has told us. But what about there's a story within the story within the story? Because in ancient Egypt, they got the same basic story. But now how the Hebrew or how the Christians have interpreted the New Testament because the half of the story, and this is the half of the story that was known in that time, this is the Gedla Adam, so this is a message on the first father and the Adam story. You, you know what I'm saying? This now gives us the half of the story. And, and by my studying it, and my studying and reading it, I don't know if you all have studied it or those who study it, what will be their conclusions on it. But one of my conclusions from the study of the Gedla Adam so far is it, it, it's just like us as black men. 
It's really, and here's where you can see the difference between the old self and the new self. Whether we really are born again, you understand? And we are born again from above in the spirit of our mind with that seed growing in our heart of the new birth or we are still in the old birth. It's really about how do we relate to our sisters, daughters, mothers, wives, especially those, especially those of the household of faith. You see, we still have these old ideas that we have not, we have not studied, you understand, and we have not meditated the true interpretation, but we're, we're, we're almost like partial birth in a sense. You understand, we're, we're partly born. And then we wonder why when we endeavor, say, upon federation or a global, a governmental or organizational task, the most difficult thing is maintaining a sense of unity and harmony. How can we if we're not in our proper person? If we say, well, yes, we're Ethiopians, but still running around with pseudonyms that we use with our so-called brothers and sisters, but our paperwork, in truth, is still under the Gentile dominion, and that we want to function sovereignly, how can we protect the sovereignty of Ethiopia? It shows that we are saying that we have faith in something, but we're not doing it. And it, go, it takes us right back to the Adam story. The Adam story. You, you recall the Adam story, don't you? How the man, wherever the black man, and, and the story in truth, the Adam and Eve story in truth concerns the black man. The Adam and Eve story in truth concerns the black man. But there's another version, another narrative that we've been given. And saying this is part of the whitewash. This other version or this pseudo-narrative that has been given to us from white supremacy, which in a sense disconnects us because we can't identify with it, firstly because we don't feel it in spirit, and then when we make ourselves believe it, it's just that we get into make-believe and, 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 and false gods and false religion or a perversion of Christianity you know what I'm saying? Well, we say we are Christian, but we don't do the things he say, and we're not really living in the real world in the way that a Christian, according to Christ, should be living. You see, remember, Lord, Lord, many shall say, Lord, Lord, but you can say, I never knew you, because they were lawless. They didn't have a foundation or a groundation. So we have to go back to the beginning. And so when we are studying Genesis, along with the idea of Genesis, and along with our Bible studies, the Gedla Adam, is one of our Ethiopic and our Holy Covenant texts that was known in the early centuries of Christianity, was known in the first century of Christianity in the time of Yeshua, like the book of Jubilees was known, because many, there are many quotes in the Gospel that actually find out now comes from the book of Jubilees or Kufale. And so now scholars are trying to make all sorts of excuses because they don't want to they don't want to say our war and our main, yay and our main, that the Ethiopian testimony is true. A few of them have, but many still are trying to find other ways about it. You know what I'm saying? Almost like we are stepchildren, while really the story of the scriptures and even of the Egyptian mysteries, which is really the same story, you know what I'm saying? But there's different narratives of it. You see, so when we talk about Adam and Eve, you know what I'm saying? The narrative determines whether we're talking about the true story or the false story. It's the narrative. See, we've been given a narrative in counterfeit, whitewashed, Gentile, European Christianity. You know what I'm saying? That in, on, on a very limited level is true because it does point to a few things the Bible says. But there's a lot of other things that are, are, are narrated which are not biblical and they never have given us any, 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 any um, justification or any, like, where did they get this from? You know, I mean, there's things we've heard preachers preach on from Adam and Eve, and it had nothing to do with, I'm like, where did they get this? I, I started to study the Bible because I wanted to find out all these things I heard in church, you understand, or heard preachers preach on. And from what I found in the Bible compared to what I heard, there was a big gap. There was a big old abyss of a gap between the two. Now we find in our Ethiopic sources, ancient 
manuscripts. And this is why we're so happy to be able to, to publish and line of Judah to be able to publish these, these, these documents again. And we highly, highly recommend it. And even if one can't get this copy or get our copy or get any copy uh, um, because of, of course, or ability to afford it, it's still out there on the Internet. You can look this up on the Internet. You understand the conflict of Adam and Eve or the Ethiopic Adam and Eve. Look it up. You'll find it out there. You'll find these scrolls. Allow website which hosts the basic whole thing, and you can download it, and, you know, you can have it there as a reference source. You understand? But it's important when we're, when we're um, um, studying the Scripture that we understand these things, that we, that we comprehend that there's more to the story. And now as we begin to study the Gedla Adam, you understand? It gives us a fuller picture of why the Bible says this right here in Isaiah um, 43, 20, 27, Thy first father have sinned. Thy teachers have transgressed against me. Now, what does it say in the next verse? The next verse says, Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary. Princes should come out of where? Egypt? But how can they come out if the sanctuary, the holy place, which means our divine heritage, if that concept is defiled or polluted in our own heads and heart and we don't understand it accurately, how can we act? How can we work out our salvation? How can we call for ourselves? You see, so the prerequisite is the preamble in our divine heritage. You understand? That's why the ministry, the churchical ministry that Lion of Judah has been about even before we knew anything of the Federation. In fact, we were there in, in the beginning, as it were, 1992, around that time, and we had some limited um, participation. It had a little bit more, so a lot of the chaos, lack of transparency, lack of regulation, and we prayed to John, why is this going on with the Federation? Why is the Federation going through this? We know that this is what you've given us. And Father Shodai, that is the divine heritage. That, that folks are like going to the back of the book, like trying to understand Revelation, the book of Revelation, and don't know the prophets, and, and don't have a foundation or a foundation. They're not anchored in the word of the Torah. You see, they're in, the, they're in a Gentile misunderstanding. And many folks are in that Gentile misunderstanding. This is the reason why we study. This is the reason why study is so important. You understand? And that if there was a way where the brothers especially could spend five years, just like Jews or European Jews do, studying the Torah, you understand, studying the Torah in the yeshiva, whether in Israel or Ethiopia, you understand, for five years or so, to really get a, a good foundation, a good groundation. I mean, how much more productive our brothers would be and their families and how much happier their woman and children will be as well. Because now that man, you understand, is not sinning after the way of Adam, which was the first father. Remember, Adam is that first father. You understand? Now we have, we have Christ, our elder brother, our big brother, coming, revealing to us the true father. Now we have the revelation of the king of kings and his Christ. You understand? Showing and proving in real time, in the time and dispensation with all the other prophetic signs. You understand? All the other prophetic signs confirm, verify, you understand, what we have said concerning the King of Kings and His Christ. Concerning our black Lord and Savior and our Godfather, Abu Kadus or Adamawi, Haile Selassie. You understand? This, we're in time of revelation now, my brother and sister. Some folks... They don't know it. They don't know what they don't know. But they're willing to learn. They will at least get to learn it. You understand? This is eternal life. That they may know the only true God and Yeshua HaMoshiach whom he has sent. And Yeshua is the son. And Jah, Yah is the father. Understand? So he says that because of this, he has profaned the princes of the sanctuary and have given Jacob, Yaakov, to the curse and Israel to reproaches. You know what this means in the real time? This means the way black folks are living, the way niggers, blacks, and coloreds are living. We've been given to a curse. When you, when you really look at it, people say, oh, just thinking positively. You can think positively all you want. You better be thinking the reality 
So you see the the the, the positive, but you see the you see the negative, you see the curse. So you can be warned, and you can warn yourself, and you can warn your brothers and sisters before it's too late. We've been given over to a curse. You know what I'm saying? Even these foreign Gentile European names are a curse, talking about we African, American. African, Africa is not a nation, it's a continent. You know what I'm saying? To, to which people? What's your connection for us? Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? We are those Ethiopians abroad. And this is the resurrection of Ethiopianism, of Ethiopia in that, uh, amongst the diaspora. You know what I'm saying? Because now we recognize that what has happened, our first fathers, the patriarchs even, the so-called patriarchs, look at the patriarchs of the Negroes, blacks, and colored. They told us to go down to Egypt and to rely on the strength of Pharaoh or the White House and the government, you understand, the federal government and civil rights, not to come out of Babylon or come out of Egypt, but to go deeper down in Egypt. How has that worked after 40 or so years? So Israel, we as the once lost but now found, have been given over to these, to these reproaches. And it's interesting if we would look right here. Let's see if we can bring that up. Where, um, look, up look at this, curse and name. Check this out, my brothers and sisters. We're going to go to, to Isaiah 65 and 15, just on the, the whole name thing. You see this right here? And ye shall leave your name. We have left our names, our true names. You know what I'm saying? Our Ethiopian names. For a curse to my chosen. Mm -hmm. That means that, that, that God would show in real time, in the latter days, remember the latter days, he says in the latter days we will comprehend it perfectly. And now we're in those latter days. The invasion, the fascist, Romanist invasion of Ethiopia, the martyrdom of, of, of those in the white robes, the barefoot Ethiopian, the holy Ethiopian, is a sign of it too. That's revelation right there, the holy martyrs, those who are martyred for his namesake. You understand how they went against that woman, that particular church. Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands. Mm -hmm. I have said that ye are like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel. So here it says, and ye shall leave your name for a curse to my chosen, for Adonai Yahweh, Adonai Jawa, shall slay thee. Adonai Jah shall slay you. Adonai Yahweh shall slay you and call his servants by another name, by another name. Now, some of us connect this with Rastafari on, on, on the churchical, the church triumphant level. That is Rastafari. But it's also for the ethnic, the lost sheep is restoring to us our Ethiopian name, the Holy Covenant, and our Israelitish identity. Overstand that. Overstand that right there. Let's look at the next verse for a moment. It says that he who blesseth himself in the earth. Notice this. One can bless himself in the earth, but how? Shall bless himself in the God of truth. So what we've been demonstrating and others have been also teaching in their videos and lectures and writing in their books is giving us the truth. So we're recognizing not just the truth, but the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles are forgotten, because they are hid from mine eyes. You see, we're in a time of change right now. This is why the Gentiles and the Gentile nations, including America, are having so many economic problems. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have slavery no more. You see, they got rich off of slavery. They got rich off of the lost sheep. They say, God bless America because of the Beta Israel. They had Negroes, blacks, and coloreds who had left their name for a curse. You know what I'm saying? And didn't know that John would still bless even because of them ignorant niggers. You understand? But we're coming to a time where it's saying here prophetically that the former troubles, overstand this right here, the former troubles, you know what I'm saying? are forgotten. We're coming to a time where we're going to be able to forget 
you know what I'm saying, about these, the, all these things that we keep talking about, slavery and COINTELPRO and how to lynch a, you know, how to lynch a slave or how to, how to make a slave, you know what I'm saying, and because they are hid from mine eyes, you know what I'm saying, because they are hid from mine eyes. So we're coming to a time of change. Now notice this prophetic word right here that is very much like Revelation. This is this is also this is some say that John of Patmos actually got this what what he said in Revelation from here. But it's one vision, one rai. It says, "For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind." So we're in a time of 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 of, of not just global, but it, it's heavenly transformations. You know, and this is why this call, this is why this message is going out there, my brothers and sisters. But be ye glad and rejoice. So we are to be what? Glad and rejoice. Not sad about this. Oh, they're, they're sad about it. You know what I'm saying? Why they're sad about it? Because th their time is over. Their time is, they're trying to extend it in iniquity, of course, and using mischief in the law. Of course, they're trying to extend it in your ignorance. And you're waiving your rights. You know what I'm saying? Really waiving your divine rights, our divine heritage. But we're to be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create, in that which John creates. You know what I'm saying? So he's creating something right now. We may not want to recognize it or realize it. And perhaps worldly things that we have or worldly people that we love are being adversely affected. So be it. We're to rejoice and be glad. And but also to separate ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Separate ourselves to find our people. You know what I'm saying? For behold, not to make people people, not to make believe people, but to trust in John, to pray, to, to listen to the Holy Spirit, to learn the word, to, to meditate the word, to memorize it, especially to meditate it. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Remember it says that, that New Jerusalem comes down out of the heavens. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Is there crying in Africa? Is there weeping in Ethiopia? Of course, because ones are still under the curse for disobedience. We have to understand that. They have not turned to him. You understand? They have not turned to him. You understand? If my people which are called by my name shall repent themselves, they have not repented themselves and turned to him. There shall be no more than an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. In other words, there's no longer be this infant mortality. And where's the greatest rate of infant mortality? And abortion among Africans and, and lost sheep. You know what I'm saying? Nor an old man, nor elders that are not living out their fullness of their days. You know what I'm saying? They're being assaulted. They're being murdered and killed by demoniacs because there's no law or no one who's willing to work out the salvation, to learn the law, and to put them and to check them on that. You know what I'm saying? It's more than just trusting Jai. Yes, Jai is given. There's, there's, there's real work to do. And if we have the faith, we can do the work. You see why the work is not being done? Because they lack the faith, our divine heritage. They ignore this. For the child shall die a hundred years old. But the sinner, being in a hundred years old, shall be accursed. You know what I'm saying? You know, so it's like judgment. You understand? But we're rejoicing in John. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. You, you see the, the eco-friendliness, the agricultural friendliness? While we're pointing out Judaism and vegetarianism, my brothers and sisters, uh, did you... Did you get a copy of that? You need to get a copy of that if you can. They shall not build and another inhabit. It's not for us to build like we have done for 400 plus years. They shall not plant and another eat. They're not going to plant vineyards. It's not going to be no share cropping. You understand? For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. I think this is so significant when we're talking about the Ethiopic uh, Kabbalah, Kabbalah, and the tree. You understand? Remember the Oromo, 
use that tree and and the autumnal are, are in the Bible. They're, they're there. It's interesting. David purchased some some land from Aruna. Oh, you know, uh, Aruna. If you look at his name in the Ethiopic, that's the root of of the Oromo people of Ethiopia. And remember, Shashimeni is in the Oromo region. Now, if we overstood these things and were able to preach them and teach them to our brothers and sisters, see, bless all the peacemakers. Understand that. So far as the days of a tree are the days of my people. So there's that, that link, that autumnal connection, even speaking of our inheritance, our divine heritage, Ethiopia. And mine elect, my Horus, my Cheru, you understand, and the Cheruyan, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. You see that? There's work of our hands, and we'll be able to long enjoy it in that kingdom dispensation. Now, we are part of bringing that into manifestation. You understand, bringing that the Azula. You know what I'm saying? Bringing that into the manifestation. You understand? And these are the, are the basic steps, even the baby steps that we take. They shall not labor, verse 23, they shall not labor in vain. All of our labor here in Babylon and for the Babylonians, for the most part, is in vain. You know what I mean? You see when the economic crisis turns, you see what happened for all the black people who are trying to be homeowners in this Balaam. In this Balim, this Baal society, they try to be owners in this ownership society, in this Baal society, and see what happened. They got shafted. You understand? In this whole economic recession, that's where Europe was profiting from, profiting on the mortgages. How many people lost their life savings, the house that they thought they were going to retire in or pass it on to their children? And now they can't pass it on to their children because of some dubious dealings but all their life's work, all their life's labor. But here it's saying for those, you understand, who have been born again in spirit and in truth, we're not going to labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble. That's another key thing, that ones have labored in vain, everything they worked for in this Babylon, and they've even had children in this Babylon, that if they were not um, careful or circumspect or... You know, if they were caught out there, they've, 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 they've lost that, too. They've lost their very children, too, because the world has taken them. You understand? The world has already programmed them with the media. And sometime beyond a certain age, you understand, there's not too much you, you can really do. you got to pray for them. You know what I'm saying? you really got to pray for them if Jah is willing in the name of Yeshua. You understand that he may wake them up so they recognize the truth of what you have been saying and what you live for, which is Rastafari, the fulfillment of prophecy, which is coming, which is going to hit this planet Earth. Everything we're going through so far is all aspects of prophecy. We're not really surprised by it. What we are surprised is that many of these things were in the Bible and we didn't even know these things. You know what I'm saying? Even from ones who had a pretty good knowledge of the Bible. So we're saying that, you know, um, the quest for knowledge you know what I'm saying? And then learning, it only stops at the grave. And if we have faith in the resurrection and the resurrection life and life and life more abundantly, we overcome that too. So that means it's a forever process of growth. You know what I'm saying? But we definitely have to grow up. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. Not those who your pastor, your preacher had blessed because you gave them money, but these are the real blessed. You know what I'm saying? The real Burukan. You know what I'm saying? Of Yahweh, of Egeziyahweh, Herlotu Subhat, and their offspring, their children with them. So speaking of that offspring, that generation to come, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. That before we even ask him, you know what I'm saying? He, he answers. That doesn't mean that you don't ask him, but when you get in that practice of asking him in that relationship, he sometimes answers you before you pray. you be like, oh, i got to pray on this. You understand? Know and when you're in a good practice, he answers you. you be like, wow, that happened. I didn't, you know what I mean? And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. So, so it, it, it won't be no time delay. You know what I'm saying? We're in that spirit. He is our God. You understand? Know and we are his people. He will dwell amongst us. There will be no need for, as they say, the temple because we are that living temple. There be no need for no animal sacrifice or blood sacrifice. We are that living 
sacrifice. And here's where it comes to the penultimate, doesn't it? The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. The dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith Yahweh. In other words, what we're seeing going on now in Africa, in the promised land, in, our, in the lands of our inheritance, according to Genesis chapter 15, you know what, I'm what we see going on in Ethiopia, all the war and rumor of war, all this chaos, all this madness, you know what I'm saying, is to come to pass. And we have to recognize the, the veritas of this very word right here. You know, what's the verity of this word right here? So what's so interesting right here is the part about the name. I just want you to see that link. I want you to pay attention to that link with, with the name, that we left off our Ethiopian names. You understand? Our holy names, our Hebrew names for a curse, for a curse to his chosen. You understand? Because Yahweh, uh, Adonai Yahweh says, Adonai Jah, or Jahweh says that he shall slay thee. You see a whole generation. You see what happened after the 60s and what happened after the revolution in Ethiopia in the mid-70s? It was like an Armageddon, both in Africa, the mercenaries, the killings, the, the murders, the neo-colonialism, what was going on in the ghetto, you know what I'm saying, COINTELPRO, entire generations. I got drugged out and pimped out and killed out and, and, and prisoned out. A whole generation was lost. You understand? But the word says that it was our father. It was, it, it was, it was Yeshua. Because we turned away from everything that the 60s had taught us about our so-called African history, our, our, our heritage, taught us about Ethiopia. We turned our backs. You know what I'm saying? We turned our backs and we went down into Egypt. Remember how Isaiah, the book of I, the prophet Isaiah says, Woe to those that go down to Egypt. What do you think going down to D.C.? What do you think the march on Washington was? It was going down to Egypt. A lot of folks don't want to recognize it, but even the civil rights folks are beginning to sit, act like they, we thought something, we did something. It seems like it's all being reversed. It seems like it's all being lost in an instant. Because we're in that time, my brothers and sisters, you understand? We're in that particular dispensation. His word is fulfilling itself. So when we speak of the fatherhood and Father's Day, let us remember what our Constitution and bylaws teach us as Ethiopians abroad, as Falashas in the West, as Exiles, as Beta Israel, as Ethiopian Hebrews. These are all descriptive names. But they're all names that apply to us as a people according to our book. You understand? We are the people of the book, the Metzhaf Kedus, or the Bible. All right? The fatherhood to usher in, in teaching, which is first, and in practice, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. There's only one way that this is logically and feasibly possible, my brothers and sisters, and that is based on the teaching of the King of Kings, of His Majesty, and the testimony of Jesus Christos. And for us as Arastafari, we have no excuse. That's, that's the missing piece. That's the missing piece to the equation to get the movement moving again, to get the Rastafari movement truly moving, because without Yeshua HaMoshiach, Without his word, the word of life and the Holy Spirit guiding us and protecting us, we can't do nothing. Let us recognize and let us understand that. So the prophetic word about our first father, you understand? Our first father is speaking of Adam, is speaking of the first Adam or the old Adam, you understand? The first Adam. Not the second Adam. The second Adam is Yeshua. Yeshua is the template for the second Adam. You know what I'm saying? And our father, the king of kings, who, who in his own authority has restored to us that kingdom authority in this particular document. But the key to making this document um, operational is contained in the preamble. And what does the preamble say right there? The preamble says, our divine heritage. So the